Oh. This beautiful tone in my voice that you're hearing is brought to you courtesy of <coughs> strep throat. I am drugged up to here. I don't know if I'm gonna remember recording this or editing this entire video, but I do wanna apologize ahead of time if this whole project comes off looking 1990s Zemeckis. I'm a little high. On life. <laughs> no. <clears throat> Seriously, it's the drugs. If you've been following my Instagram for like the last month or so, you're well aware that I've been playing around with these, with these, these juicy long exposure drone photos. <music> Cannot stop sweating. Now there's only three steps to taking really cool photos like this. You need a low shutter speed, ND filters, and pay. <laughs> You say, Chris, give me an example. What kind of patience? If you can get through that obnoxious line read, you're not gonna be able to take these photos. You use ND filters anytime you wanna restrict light getting down into the camera. And that's the number one thing we need to do. By the way, every drone pilot, photographer, and filmmaker needs to have these in their toolbox. Link in the description. I'm gonna restrict the light getting into the camera. Yeah, come on. Now I can lower my shutter speed to match my exposure. Look at all this motion blur. It's like I'm in an 80s music video. <coughs> oh, that was a mistake. Number three is speed matching. The drone has to fly the exact same speed as what you're trying to photograph. The idea here is that you want your subject to not be blurry, but everything else around it to be blurry. That feels like a poorly constructed sentence. And the only way this works is if the speed matching with your drone is almost perfect. You also have to match direction of travel while maintaining altitude, orientation, and distance from the subject. I feel like I can explain this a lot better outside. How are we gonna get there? I'm doing this today I don't recommend all of my friends have jobs or children so I've got no one to help me I, I need to I need to grow up I'm gonna have to fly the drone and drive the car so car drone me I have really generous friends but it's they let me use their expensive cars but they act like they've never seen my channel before First I want to show you how to get photos from the sides and from behind. And if you have a DJI drone, using the active track is going to make this a cakewalk. The drone is going to handle all the hard, tricky, intricate flying for you. The only thing you need to do is click away at the shutter button. I don't know what this is. All these photos are shot at a 1 5th shutter speed, ISO of 100 using an ND32 filter. Here we go. angles are fairly easy but to get any successful photo from above or from the front uh, you're gonna have to work for it active track doesn't work looking straight down or flying backwards and I like to fly like low to the ground and like it, as close as I can get to what I'm photographing safely but to be able to do that I disable all my sensors and now without active track all the flying is in your hands uh, 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 it's too touchy. Don't get intimidated, the results are totally worth the effort. If I can give you one piece of advice, go slow. 
I'm only driving five to 10 miles an hour and I'm getting awesome results. It's gonna take some work to get this right. Finding the drone, trying to match that speed just perfectly long enough to take your picture, don't give up. like my eyes aren't opening all the way. If you try this technique and you're having success, hit up my Instagram because I would love to see what you got. My ideas board is getting full. I got some I got some really cool videos coming down the pike. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, leave a comment, and I'll see you around. <coughs> <laughs>